Our final guest is one quarter of the impossibly beautiful family musical group, The Chorus, who dominated the charts in the 90s and beyond. She's back with her most personal musical offering to date. But before we take a look at that, uh, let's have a look at The Chorus in action. Please welcome the beautifully named Andrea Kaur. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I thought you liked Angela. Perfect. You liked Angela. <laughs> OK. <laughs> How are you, Mrs? Are you all I'm right? good, thanks. Very good, yes. Now, we haven't seen you for a little while. What have you been up to? Oh, well, lots of things. I've got this record out now, which is of old songs, which is mm -hmm. different for me this time. And, yeah, I did some plays. I did a couple of plays. One here in London and one in um, Ireland. And I got married. You've been busy. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Good stuff going yes. on. Yeah. When did oh. you get married? Um, uh, 2009. <laughs> <laughs> two years ago. Nearly two years ago. <laughs> what made you decide to go into acting? I thought oh. you were going to say to get married. Well, what, <laughs> 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 what, what made you, did you, was that something you always did? It was. It was something I've always like ah, loved, okay. loved to do, and uh, from from growing up. But obviously, with the band, there wasn't much time to to indulge that passion. But yeah, I got more time. Over was the it last nice to just? You going to do some more? Oh, I'd love to. I really, I mean, I only finished uh, Jane Eyre in the Gate in Dublin in February. Oh, right. So, yeah. When did you do Dancing at Luna, sir? That was about... That was before I got married, so that's 2009, I right. guess. <laughs> that's, that's a brilliant play. Did you, how did you, did you have acting lessons or did you just kind of instinctively kind of find your way through it? Yeah, well, kind of, kind of, I was working with great people, I have to say, and I, you know, I was kind of, once I got the part, I was flung in at the deep end, so I kind of had to step up to the plate somehow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we had a great director, Anna Mackman, and, you know, it's just, it's the most incredible play, though. Yeah, Brian yeah. Friel, yeah. you know, he's a master. It's, it's, you know, you always are discovering something in, in mm -hmm. his work, so, you know, I really loved it. Yeah. Now, since, since you performed with the, the Corps as a group, you, you've had an album out in the interim, but yeah. this one's very different because it's not necessarily your own music you're, you're covering mm. other people's what made you decide to go in that direction well it kind of was it was actually the idea of the producers really he wanted to meet me after we had done this charity record um, and you know he, he was very complimentary about my voice and felt to him it had he hadn't heard it the way he'd like to hear it mm -hmm. so the idea of doing a record of kind of hidden gems maybe not the most okay um, uh, so, known of songs, yeah. but um, and first of all, I was hesitant, thinking, no, I always write write the songs, and that's part of it. But then I got kind of excited about it, going, you know, music is is unique in that you can revisit what you felt when you mm -hmm. listen to a song, and I thought about that in relation to my own life and the songs that have been lifelines to me. And, and did you feel as well, because your, your, your solo album, it was critically very well received, mm. um, but commercially perhaps didn't do as, as well as you'd hoped. Did, it, did that knock you back a wee bit, good confidence-wise? It must have been different to think, right, I'm going back in the studio, I'm doing another album. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, I suppose I was a little disillusioned, but um, at the same time, I still felt... You know, I, th I think the success is in having made the record, and I wrote it, and I feel really happy with it. I wouldn't change a thing about it. So, you know, I have no regrets, because really, if I didn't like where I am now, then I'd have regrets, but I like where I am now, yeah. so... And you've chosen a lot of the songs on this album, haven't you? Yeah, I've chosen them all, yes. All of yeah, them. Yeah. So, mm. are you emotionally connected to any of them? Yeah, yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's, there's... Um, uh, one in particular, I do uh, Roy Orbison's Blue By You. Yeah. Oh, but oh, our parents were a band as well, and so oh. um, my mother sang, and um, actually she sang for the first time when she was on, live and with an audience when she was pregnant with me. Oh. And, oh, um, yeah, so they, used, they, they made a recording one time of the songs that they did, and uh, one of them was Blue By You. So oh. it's very personal. It's actually really lovely to sing it now. How she lovely. did, yeah. How, now, would that... Um, Families, you know, would that yeah. suggest that you might like to be singing perhaps one day with a little I'd person love inside that. your yeah. that's on the cards? I would is love it? that, yeah. Very I good. would love it. Very nice. Well, we look forward to that then. And, and obviously, you know, you've not necessarily performed with the chorus for a, a wee while, but uh, mm. you, you're a family, so you can never actually split up, I suppose. No, are you just going to no. go off, do your own thing, That's and then do, do you think you'd ever get back together as a band at all? I think, it's, I think it's pretty likely, yeah. You know, I mean, this, you know, we never got a, got a chance to kind of go on our individual path in our 20s like most people do. Mm. That's okay. We had a shared, a shared passion for, for the music, but it's kind of good that everybody's getting a chance to fulfil their own particular destiny right yeah. now. But I think that it is, it's pretty probable that we'll do something We're again. We're talking about achieving anyway. So are you a family of achievers? Or did that come from your mother and father? I have to say, they had a naive, like, they had an incredible belief in us. You know, our, 
uh, Daddy used to always say every year, uh, whatever, 1994, the Coors will rule the world. 1995, <laughs> the Coors will rule the world. <laughs> and I just kept going, yeah, so. So, no, there was, I think, I think instilling belief in your children is a very good thing. Now, you obviously, because you know, I can remember back in, you know, Saturday Kids TV, it was a beautiful course. Even the name is like, core, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're gorgeous. Is it true that your, your lovely husband, who you've now been with for, since 2009, um, is it true that he said you, you, wouldn't, you weren't necessarily his type of girl, he thought you'd sit in the corner writing poetry about death? I know, he shocked <laughs> me like that. Yeah, because he had been, he'd been friends with my brother. So there's quite a lot, um, you know, we were in each other's company for years and we, we still find events and I go god you were there too so wow and I said why, did, why didn't you talk to me and he says oh you know I thought you were lovely but I thought you were in the corner writing poetry about death <laughs> so <laughs> that's nice yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. that's right here's Andrea Cora she's beautiful but a little bit of a misery <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're going to be performing for us in just a second so we'll let you go over and get ready but uh, for now it's Andrea Cora everybody thank you, thank you.